You want to talk business? You want to talk economies? Just some common sense. I don't get better than Terry McCran, the business commentator with the Herald Sun, who joins us now from Magnificent Melbourne. Great man. Lovely to see you. Obviously, we took <laughs> some note of your articles over the past couple of days comparing the current <laughs> Prime Minister to the old one in Whitlam. May I read ever so slightly your own words back to you? In 12 months, PM Albanese is looking increasingly like 21st century replay of Whitlam and his ministers, clones of their Whitlam counterparts. Whitlam had been all about striding on the world stage, embracing grand, eloquent themes great word by the way, both uh, internationally and at home, or with precious, precious little relevance and even less benefit of the vast numbers of the hoi polloi here, here. But why in particular do you think he's uh, Whitlam 2.0? Well, very obviously, Paul, I was not trying to suggest that he was literally the <laughs> 21st century version of Gulf Whitlam. He lacks his grandeur or his pomposity, whichever word you prefer to choose, uh, but his approach to government, as I say, to spell that out, you know, hits the ground running, not on dealing with the issues that actually matter to people, and particularly the people that voted for him, power prices, the cost of housing, rentals, cost of living, all those sorts of things, but embracing the role of being this imperial prime minister so that he, he wanders the world, shaking hands with every leader and every leader's assistant, seemingly. We saw him occasionally at home through 2022, but only occasionally in between trips. I'm pretty certain, Paul, by the time we get to the end of his three years, his first three years, he will have racked up far more Qantas frequent flyer points, in theory, uh, because he's not flying Qantas, he's flying on, the, on his own jet, than any other leader, in, 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 even including uh, the, the fabulous Kevin Rudd. Um, and secondly, at home, again, uh, these grand gestures, the, the voice, uh, those sorts of things, again, rather than dealing with... And remember, we, he, he, we supposedly had this plan which was going to address all of those issues that really are impacting on ordinary Australians, leading off with that $275 cut in your power bill. So, and, and when you go down into the ministers, we see people like Chris Bowen hmm. replaying the insanity of, in a different way, of Whitlam's uh, resources minister, Rex Connors, and so on. And, and again, on Friday, in reaction to the, the uh, judgment, we had Burke, Tony, B Burke I think it's Burke, the, the, the relevant minister, praising it. Uh, as setting, you know, a, a high standard, mm. reminded me again of Whitlam's Labor Minister saying he wanted the public sector to be the wage setters for higher wages across the community. Uh, now, all of those sort of thing flavours make me a little worried that we're going to have the sort of chaos and the consequences that we saw in the Whitlam period. Well, I have uh, not hidden my feelings about how millions of people got absolutely shivved by this government and mm -hmm. the media that helped bring them to power. Why? Because this was the promise of Albanese, right? Literally decided to tweet it himself so I can refer to it every night. A Labor government will bring down, will bring down the cost of living. 12 months on, all of it's up. But, of course, it's all cyclical and the media doesn't blame him for anything. Literally, tonight, earlier in the show, 35% of people say that their tax return is relevant to how they balance their finances. About, what is it, 10 15% of people say it's absolutely essential. This government made a decision to rip $1,500 guaranteed tax returns out of people's hands, yet again, no one says anything. And I think what you're seeing here, too, is a gulf between the people who are useful in terms of changing uh, the government, but completely unnecessary to the front end of the plane when it comes to talking about the day-to-day. -day. Because every poll tells us cost of living, number one issue, 88% of people, 12 months in, it's all worse. Yet the polls, because of the media coverage, they keep getting better for the bloke. Well, indeed, Paul, and I guess when you're travelling the world, you sort of get a slightly different focus than you would have if you were sitting in Canberra or Sydney actually seeing that reality being played out every day in terms of both what's happening to people's lives and obviously the sort of mail you'd get uh, as a consequence. So, yes, I agree absolutely with what you're saying, that what was promised was a fantasy, but they haven't even tried to deliver on the fantasy or pretend to deliver on the fantasy. 
uh, and it's not going to get any better. That's the, that's that's the mm. central point. I mean, we'd like to see wage rises catching up with inflation, but if we have wage rises catching up with inflation, we're going to get more inflation. And I mean, the cost on business is much higher than the actual raw wage increase. There's the superannuation guarantee levy. There's payroll tax. There's a whole host, and and business faces all those cost of living dynamics that are impacting on, on, on ordinary Australians. Cost of power, cost of rent, et cetera, et cetera. So the very, there's a very grim prospect out there that the pain is only going to get worse and you don't have a government which even understands that, far mm. less focuses, focuses on trying to alleviate it. Well, of course, never forget, you know this, but only two people in the entire ministry have any experience in small business. One of them is Tony Burke, who just says it, but I can't find what it was. The other was the trade minister who had his own wine label <laughs> when for two minutes he wasn't a senator. Terry, great to talk to you. Look forward to keep reading you very shortly in the Herald Sun and lots of other great newspapers around the country. Thank you, mate.